Hello, everyone. This is Derek Kwan here, Executive Director at Your Lead Center of Kansas. It is my pleasure to welcome all of you, and we are so happy today to have uh, the baritone saxophone player from the Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra with Wynton Marsalis join us, Mr. Paul Nedzella. Paul, welcome. Thank you Thanks so much. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me, Derek. I appreciate it. Thanks for inviting me on. Yeah. Hey, man. It's great to see you. It's great. To, always great to see you. And, um, you know, uh, the, the, we're going to cover a bunch of different topics today, but we'll start first with uh, uh, the project that you played a, a very key role in, and that is the Rock Chalk Suite, um, a celebration of 15 KU basketball luminaries. And uh, the, first of its kind, the first project of its kind where, you know, we had many, many composers from the Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra uh, compose a movement celebrating uh, a KU basketball luminary. So once you heard about the project and once, once it was introduced to you, uh, what were your kind of your initial thoughts um, about it? Yeah, well, you know, it's funny. I mean, first I was just thinking, so normally I don't, I don't write arrangements for the right. band, right? Right, right. So I heard, okay, there's this cool project that's going on between KU and Jazz Lincoln Center. Um, they didn't tell me everyone was going to write. They just said, would you be interested? And I was like, well, it's not really my bag, you know, but, you know, keep me posted let me know. Um, but then I found out they really wanted everyone in the band to write something for everyone. So honestly, the first thoughts that go through my head are, how am I going to do this? <laughs> Two things. One, I'm not a good arranger. I didn't have much experience with arranging or composing. You know, I do a little, but, uh, and the other thing is honestly, I'm not that big of a, of a basketball guy. I'm not that big yeah. of a sports guy. So right. I was like, man, I got, I got two things to brush up on with this project, but obviously I was excited to do it and be part of it. Um, but just the collaborative effort, I think, you know, between having everyone in the band do something and also have it be interdisciplinary. It, it's just, it was a really unique project, right? So uh, the first thought was maybe a little bit of terror and then after that, <laughs> That's you know, cool, man. calmed down a little bit and then, uh, and then just got to writing and seeing what I could come up with. And, and it was cool. And I had uh, Chris Crenshaw did a great job and he helped me arrange, arrange the tune. So he definitely did a lot of heavy lifting for me on that one. Yeah, yeah so, so we talked to Chris uh, uh, recently as well. And, um, you know, he was, he, he really enjoyed arranging uh, your, 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 your movement. And, um, you know, and he was talking a little bit about, uh, you know, the player that you, you, uh, you honored and that being Nick Collison. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you talk about the, uh, how you conceived of third quarter, which is the name of that movement? Sure. Yeah. So I, I wrote third quarter. I mean, you know, I, I kind of got an understanding of Nick Collison basically just from trying to figure out what I thought he was like as a human being, as a person, where he was coming from. I was figuring, you know, I started learning kind of the, he was, I mean, just so incredible, right? With the, like the way his career started going. And then he had to have shoulder surgery right at the right. day. You, I was like, wow, he really persevered through all these things. And he just became this, In this, this piece, loyal center Mr. To, to the franchise. Grace of the game's more unglamorous fundamentals and on the way he made the dirty work of taking a charge into a dance, represented in the song by the falls of the lower horns. In trying to capture that slow dance with his steadfastness, perseverance, and unselfishness, this song in three is for number four, Nick Collison, and is called Third Quarter. So I just wanted to kind of embody certain things like the fundamental approach that he had to the game, doing what he could, and also there was like, kind of listful but really loyal too and so I, I you know when I wrote something it was I I was thinking of it more in a small group context because that's what I'm more comfortable with but I knew Chris cool. would be able to do whatever he wanted with it we, he was right. doing great but we talked about it a little bit and he showed me a draft and I kind of came back to him too a little bit he was really good at at coming up with analogies to show to make the lower horns fall to go with the charges that Nick Collison yeah. was known for right Sure? And, uh, and the flutes were embodying of the unicorn, you know, the unicorn, like the big man who can also shoot and everything. So yeah. you had these really specific, you know, specific references, right, to the basketball thing where I was like, oh, man, I wouldn't have thought to do that in the composition anyway. So throwing it in the arrangement was, was great. Yeah, so um, it's a, it's, it definitely stands out. Your movement definitely stands out because, uh, first of all, it's a beautiful tune. Um, and, and it's in 3-4, I believe, right? Uh, yeah and uh, in three, four time and the instrumentation of it, just like you were saying, you know, the flutes, uh, the juxtaposition with them 
with the lower ended uh, instruments and timbres really makes a, a very, very interesting and enjoyable movement. So, so man, congratulations on, 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 on that wonderful contribution to the whole entire suite. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, so, you know, uh, also we were so fortunate to be able to record the, the project in the House of Swing at, at Rose Theater. And right. can, you, can you talk a little bit about uh, just the recording process in general and, and being able to do it in a studio setting in a theater. Right. So, that, I mean, that's, that's always a little weird, right? When you do the recording studio in a theater, because it's like almost <laughs> can feel like sometimes the best of both or the worst of both worlds, you know what I mean? But, sure. um, but it gives it a good feeling, I guess, rather than being in like a box in a recording studio. But we hadn't played any of these songs also since the concert. That was right. the other end, or at least most of them. A couple of them we played kept playing so yeah revisiting them a few of them specifically i remember uh elliot mason wrote a tune that was just like really technically challenging so all of a sudden we pulled it out it was like oh wow we need to rehearse this actually <laughs> for a while because we couldn't just go like some of them like man you know we can get through it i think in one or two takes or something like that but that was that was one of the interesting things it was like halfway rehearsal recording but we fall into things quickly yeah um, no definitely definitely i remember when you were recording uh, Elliot's movement for Walt's Waltz for Walt Wesley. And he was he was at the recording session, right? And um, I, I just remember Elliot actually, uh, you know, not feeling well, but he yeah. st he stuck it out during the session to make sure that that movement uh, was recorded in, in a manner that satisfied him, the actual. Right. So that was yeah. that was really cool to see. I mean, not cool that he got sick, but like no. the perseverance that he uh, you know he stuck it out in order to see it through. That was great that you showed up to that too. That was the other thing. I mean, having you guys there was, was you know, kind of gave us like an authentic feeling about it where it wasn't just totally removed. It was like, yeah, you know, you were part of it. Yeah. You had, you had, you had a, you had a, a, a nice contingent of Kansans and Jayhawks. In, That's right. In yeah. the crowd observing the whole, the whole process, which was, you know, so thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for, for, oh, was, it, were, was there anything that surprised you about the project when you, when you uh, started to, kind of dig into it well i mean the thing that surprised me was you know it happens a lot but this time being part of it on the arranging side that's always that changes the perspective a little bit but hearing how the different composers and arrangers drew on the influences of the players that was something i really was that i mean i always know that they're great but i'm always kind of surprised by the way they they're able to do that right like they, they can really pick out certain characteristics and have a really clear specific references if it's like sound effects to basketball games but it could also be to to moves that they would do or something like that or a feeling that they would bring to the team i was like man they, you know you can get you can get right in there musically with these clear references i just think it's so hip yeah man and, and something I also, that the announcing too on the actual concert that was something yeah. that surprised me too i was yeah, i wasn't ready for that one that was pretty hip i'd never done yeah. anything like that yeah, shout out to uh, Brian Haney, the voice of the Jayhawks, who, yeah. you know, literally like less than 24 hours before the the concert, we ran into him when we were, you know, taking a tour of Allen Fieldhouse and, and the uh, uh, the DeBruce Center, which houses the, the 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 original rules of basketball. He's like, hey, man, you, would you guys, yeah, I'd love to help out with anything. And, and if, if you're interested in, in getting introduced, you know, like as if you're basketball players at Allen Fieldhouse, I'd be happy to do it. And the guys, you know, everybody was like, yeah, let's do it, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So that was awesome. So shout out to Brian Haney. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, that, that, that was really, that, that was a, a really fun. And, and, you know, you got, you all are, are, are now part of our family and, and, you know, the Jazz Lincoln Center Orchestra is, is all you're part of the mythology of our town and our university now. So, um, you know, we're, lo we're looking forward to having you back. Um, actually we have a, a date scheduled in October, um, you know, but, but we don't, you know, obviously with the public health situation as it evolves, um, we're keeping our fingers crossed, knocking on wood, trying to stay optimistic that we'll be seeing you soon. But um, yeah. but but we're but no matter what, you're 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 welcome here all the time, anytime, and all the time. And man, a couple things I want to talk to you that I really appreciate about appreciate about you. Um, you know, the night before the the, the performance, um, we had a, a gathering. Some of the um, very generous folks that were were responsible for for helping to sponsor the the, the entire project. And, and we had a, a, a few of the KU jazz students um, playing uh, during the dinner. And you were the oh, first yeah. person 
to get out your horn and right. sit in with those students. And man, those students were so, first of all, so in awe of you and so grateful for the fact that they had a chance to play with you. Um, and, and the fact that you did that in such a selfless manner, just want to thank you for that. Oh man, it was my pleasure. I, honestly, in some of those situations, like I used to do so many of those gigs, I'm just back, background <laughs> music. And I was like, you know, I'm just kind of more comfortable playing, being behind my horn half the time than I am, you know, in front of people. So it's like, Hey, yeah, let's just go and play. So I, it, I'm glad, I'm glad it was, it was my pleasure. Yeah. Definitely. Well, yeah, you know, cause, cause being a university our our you know, our primary, uh, f function and goal is to provide, you know, these educational experiential learning opportunities um, for students. And there's nothing better than those students getting a chance to play with, you know, members of the Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra. So, um, and also I want to thank you for, you know, taking a leap of faith and, 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 and uh, uh, you know, become, being vulnerable and writing, actually composing something for, for big band. And because I know that, you know, for, for several of the cats, it, it, it like you were saying, it's not necessarily in, in your normal wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. But but as you know, like the arts are all about uh, creativity, kind of stepping out of your comfort zone every once in a while. And so I just want to I want to thank you for that, uh, because that, you know, that 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 that, that movement is, is fantastic and adds such a wonderful element to the entire suite. So kudos okay. for that. I appreciate it. It was I'm really glad I did do it. And also just to get the feeling from you guys, too. I mean, you guys, besides being I mean, definitely diehard Jayhawks fans, right? I mean, just the feeling of solidarity. You guys are you, just strong, you know, and, it, and the way we can come together. So it's a beautiful thing and I'm happy to be part of it. it cool, really man. Yeah. Hey, so, so ch kind of changing topics a little bit. Um, how, how have you been able to stay creative during this, these, this time of, of kind of isolation and, and quarantining? Um, do you have a, a routine that you, you kind of follow? Or um, yeah, I mean that's a good question. I, you know, it's a uh, these. This is the earliest I practice in my entire life because um, <laughs> you know I got a I got a one year old at home. Yeah. So, like I've already been up for a few hours. I can get my practicing in at eight a.m. now. So that's, <laughs> I kind of get it get it in early and stick with a little routine. So that that's cool. Um, but the thing about creativity that's that's hard. There's no doubt about it. Um, honestly, I. A lot of people talk about it, you know, just like, how do you stay creative? Um, but I don't feel like an, it, it's hard. It's not yeah. like you can necessarily can be creative all the time. Sure. Um, and I don't think you can force inspiration. This is because we're all just locked in our in our little bubbles, right? I mean, I listen to music all the time, you know, a lot of old stuff, but some new things. But um, so there's always more than enough to check out for me personally, right? It's like, I could listen. I, there's, I got a long list of stuff to check out for days and weeks and years. <laughs> that would going to be a shortage. But I can, I can never force that inspiration. So all the only thing I try to do is just get to it. You know what yeah. I mean? I yeah, always you're... remember hearing authors, it was like writers write. So it's like, you want to do it? Just sit down in front of it, get going. And so that's what I'm trying to do. But it's, it's hard not having like the other inspirations to draw from externally you know, being with those other cats in the band and another band that just like hearing the different influences what people are doing it's not the same no doubt about it God, yeah no it's okay there's a, there's a lot of terrible things going on in the world so i mean that's plenty to draw on inspirationally for art you know definitely that that could mess me up plenty <laughs> oh yeah there's no question about that that's mess, that's it's in all of us up i think yeah um but i appreciate your honesty in that answer because i think you know sometimes you know, folks have the impression that that performers, musicians, artists are able to, you know, conjure up some creativity at any moment on you know the snap of a finger. But, but just like with uh, someone that that is uh, writing a book or a poem or an essay, there's writer's block all the time, or there's you know, creativity block or composition block. You know, um, so I appreciate your honesty in that. And 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 you touched upon something that I think may relate to this 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 uh, this next question. Um, is is what are what are you missing the most during this time period where you haven't been able to really really leave your apartment? I mean, for me, honestly, it's it's just being able to play live with with the guys with the cast and band, brother and sister. Yeah. Man, I mean, there's something it's easy to take for granted. You yeah. know, um, I never felt like I did take it for granted, honestly, but 
being without it, it definitely makes me appreciate it more because just that, that feeling man, of just being in the music, you could play along with recordings, whatever. It is never the same thing. Even when it's in a bad situation, the live setting, right? It's still alive. You're still feeding off of other people, you know, <laughs> exactly or otherwise. So you can still just get that different kind of energy. So I'm, no question. I'm missing that. A, a yeah. Lot. You know, human interaction is so underrated. <laughs> uh, and, and human interaction is certainly something that I definitely took, uh, took for granted uh, before this whole situation arose. Um, but before well, we... So you've got your family to interact with you over there. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. They interact with me. But, you know, um, you know, the 14-year-old the, the, the is, you know, in that phase where it's like, you know, wants to be a little more, uh, you know, alone time, et cetera, et cetera. The eleven-year-olds all into video games. <laughs> so you're on your own. There you yeah, go. I'm on my, my me, my wife and I are on our own, which is fun, which is totally cool. So it's it's, but it's it's just different, you know. Um, and you and you 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 really don't realize how much energy, uh, you glean from other people when you interact with them. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, but uh, I I, told, I completely understand what you're saying, man. Because that, that yeah yeah I'm I'm always surprised by how much I just musically I draw from my, I mean, yeah. not like I'm copying them, but I'm like, wow, I'm really dependent on that energy, man. That energy helps me a lot, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. So this, this is my, the last question. It kind of relates back to uh, uh, Rock Chalk Suite. I don't know if I've heard another JLCO album that features as many baritone saxophone features or solos, you know, that, that occur throughout the whole, the whole suite. I mean, you've got, you've got, there several, there, you've got several solos throughout, you know, all 15 movements, um, which is great, which is fantastic. And like, you're, you're um, telling you, it's like, man, well, they should have cut a couple of those out, right? I know. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 man. And, and, and one of them that is, uh, or it's more of a, a call and response that you have with, with Chris Crenshaw during the, the movement, the truth, where he's singing. Oh, yeah. And, and you're, you know, you're responding to his lyrics. Mm -hmm. And I, and I know you have, I think you have another solo on like Waltz Waltz. Um, also. That's right. There's a little trading on that one too. Yeah. And then I think you, you also, do you also have a solo on Wiggins and six, eight too? I think the Carlos's movement. Oh yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you're right. Wow. I did yeah, have man. a lot of solos on that one. Yeah, that's good, man. That's a good thing, man. I know. I know. Yeah. I'm always like, Hey, I never get, I guess I got three. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I'm just happy to, I'm, I, you know, I'm not one of those guys that needs, feels the need to, so I love soloing, you know, don't get right. me wrong. I'll take some more solos, but, you know, but you, you're I know such I a play humble. baritone, so. You're, su you're, you're such a humble guy, though. I mean, you, you, you're you such a team player, and that's, you know, kind of going back to that basketball analogy and metaphor, you know, there's 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 guys on every team and every big band that that understand their role, you know, and, and uh, the, 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 the better that each individual understands their role as part of the team, then the better the product will be at the end of the day, whether it's on the basketball court or whether it's on the stage at Rose Theater on the road for, with a big yeah. There was a quote I remember I read from Nick when I was looking this up that he yeah. said something like that where it was, you know, he just, he always, he was lucky to have great teammates and he loved them so much and all he ever tried to do was to help them win. Yeah. And he hoped that they understood it and he always felt like he stuck with it and he, you know, he hoped that they saw him that way. And obviously he was, but I was always like, oh, man, that was really touching. You know, there's something about that, that someone can be that selfless towards like a greater good, man. And I think it's such a great message to kind of carry on with for so many of us and all kinds well, of things. Definitely. And then, you know, jazz music is the perfect way to express that, you know, um, in terms of looking for the greater good, uh, you know, freedom, right? Uh, yeah. you know, representation of democracy um, in action. So, man, I think that's a, that's a, a, a great way to, to round out this, this discussion. And once again, man, thank you so much and all the best, uh, just all positive vibes and love to you and your family and your, and your little one-year-old, man. Um, you too, bro. Yeah, take care of that family. All right, brother. Well, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and I hope we can see you in October too. You got it, man. Take care, Paul Nedzella. All right, take care, Derek.